this is a uh, this is something I uh, ripped off Curtis Sargent, and I just when I saw it, I, I thought it was good. Um, a lot of times, these acronyms we use are really cheesy, um, but sometimes they they're catchy, they're sticky, and they catch. And there's one where um, basically describes what are we what are you shoot for in making a disciple. And I'm always looking for easy ways to communicate that with people. And he uses an acronym called SOAR, and I think it really captures uh what we've seen happen uh in our process and so this is what we're shooting we're trying to make a disciple that soars all right so there you go it's pretty cheesy but the first one is uh they're a self feeder uh when it comes to the word of god and that is so so huge um i think of the thousands of bible studies that we go to in a lifetime and this is the person that um, those are all good. They're one. I, I think any Bible study I go to, whether it's church or something, that's just like cherry on top of the ice cream. It, it's not what I depend on. This is a person that is self-motivated. It's intrinsic. They go to the word. They read it. Um, they don't need someone prodding them, keep pulling, pushing them. They, they. I, I kind of look at it as they, they are self-feeder. They bring their mouth. They can bring the spoon up to their mouth and they can do likewise. So they don't have to have someone constantly feeding them. This is a real, a biggie because it's such a tap root issue. Uh, just a couple anecdotal things. We really saw this during COVID when we couldn't meet in buildings and we couldn't meet in groups. It, you really found out who was a self feeder. I, I didn't need it. It's obviously wonderful because I believe the Bible is meant to be studied in community. It's communal literature, but um, this is, this is huge. One quick story, I'll selfishly, I remember we always wanted our kids to read the Bible, right? I'm constantly like, come on down, read with mom and dad. Um, I'll never forget the, the day I, I was upstairs cleaning or something, and I looked in my son's room, and he was gone, and his Bible was there, and there was a notepad next to it, and the, he had left his light on, and the pen was down there, and it was all these notes he was reading. Um, I, I think he was in the book of Hebrews, which is, and I knew at that moment, it it took. He was a self feeder. He didn't need me constantly prodding him to do that. So that's true with anything as self feeder because that's really going to drive. The next one is uh, kind of an obvious is um, their obedience. Uh, obedience. Gosh, I had to think about that uh, uh, posture. I guess uh, this is this everyone in, in the discipleship community wants to see this. We call it rapid obedience. This is someone. It's just their posture is to obey. It, um, they're not one of those who hears and then they kind of do a cost benefit analysis. What's it going to cost? Me? Their, their desire is to constantly hear the word of God and, and they, they default toward obedience. It might be delayed for a period of times, but they want to obey quickly. Um, like like the uh, the end of the, the um, Sermon on the Mount, they hear and they obey. This is the key uh, mark of a of a quickly obey uh rapidly obeying or rapidly growing disciples are obeying it's just that simple they hear this is they have ears to hear they hear and obey very quickly um the next one is is kind of i love it it's aware of lostness and that is um i really love this one because uh, in the last eight years, this is when, as we're taking people out into the harvest and we're teaching them to hear, share the gospel, this, this really is one of the, the unintended consequences of that process is they go back into their spheres of influence, uh, their neighbors, their coworkers, their family, and they're like, they're far from God. And they just become more aware. And just that awareness of lostness around you is really such a strong first step is that you're it's on your radar now you're with things you didn't notice or people you didn't notice were that now you're aware of lostness that is such a um such a key posture to have and then the last one that really separates the men from the boys is the reproducing um and there's a lot that goes into that i realize these are these are massive topics but i can look at this person and I can see people behind them down line that are obeying, they're following Jesus, and they're doing likewise with it. this right here separates the men from the boys. 
Um, they actually have names of people that are now doing these things because of them. Their, their social security numbers tied to them. So when we're trying, these are some of the kind of key markers, their obedience base, their self-feeders, they're aware of lostness, and they have a track record of reproducing disciples behind them.